is beautiful algebraically, not geometrically, but is designed to actually be evaluated. Let's now swing all the way over to arithmetic integrals that you're very familiar with. I'll point out one formula, one and a half, the fundamental theorem of calculus, of course, and change of variables. It's called substitution. I call it the chain rule. It should not be called anything other than the chain rule. Okay? So let me complete now in the context of arithmetic integrals, which you know very well. I just want to say here that here there's no such thing as a fundamental theorem of calculus. There's no differentiation. The fundamental theorem of calculus which, by the way, is not a theorem. I have a video on YouTube that's called that. The fundamental theorem of calculus is not a theorem. That would maybe be helpful for you guys to peruse. Uh, but here, you, we don't have any technique like that at our disposal. You have to use ingenuity. There's no such thing as the fundamental theorem of calculus here. because there's no derivatives here. It's all about addition. It's not about differentiation. Okay, arithmetic integrals. Integrals that you know very, very well. They can be essentially defined by the fundamental theorem of calculus. So for example, if we have this relationship, we'll use the choice of letters here is very important. So here's what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. And that, of course, is the reason why arithmetic integrals are part of your calculus courses and on a more meaningful level why we can actually evaluate them, right? Beautiful conceptually, can't really evaluate much. Uh, appealing conceptually in a different way, this is beautiful algebraically, not geometrically, but is designed to actually be evaluated. And the theorem, the fundamental theorem of calculus reads, that when you integrate the derivative of something, the answer is the antiderivative, which is the function that it's the derivative of, the difference between the endpoints. And that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Since in this class we like turning concepts on their head, I would say, for the purposes of finding a starting point and moving and going forward, I would say, why don't I say this is the definition of an integral? An integral of a function is the antiderivative evaluated at the ends of the integration domain and subtracted one from the other. Okay, that's my, why don't we adopt that as the definition of the integral? Okay, that could be one approach. Let's take that as our approach. So from here we can easily find the alternative statement of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let me do a couple switches. Uh, here is, I'm going to use the, a random letter for the integration. To be honest, I don't even know how to pronounce that. I just don't want it to be x. And I will replace the outer limit with x. And so now the fundamental theorem of calculus reads this way, okay? And what I will now do is take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, and I will find out that the derivative of this with respect to x equals the derivative of this with respect to x, which of course is just this, minus the derivative of the constant with respect to x, which of course is just zero. And of course this is by definition lowercase f of a. So the definition which I've now erased, was basically telling you how to go from the derivative to the antiderivative. It, it talked about the integral of the derivative. And in this formulation, we're talking about the derivative of the integral. Okay, you guys are with me on this? I just showed you how to go from one to the other. And a good question, maybe for your midterm, for your final, is how to go from the other one, from this one, to the original one will require a little bit of thinking, okay, what do I have and what can I use?
Okay, well that's great. Okay, let's now combine this with the chain rule and see what we get. And what we'll get is the formula that's called integration by substitution. <laughs>